All right. There he is. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on? Good, good, good. You know me, just doing my thing. Uh, what, <laughs> what's happening? You're in Connecticut, right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, the first important question is, mom and dad, how they doing? Mom and dad are good. Uh, dad's retired. Uh, mom has probably like another year. And uh, yeah, that, that's it, man. And they'll be doing whatever they want. Yeah, make sure you uh, tell them I said what's up. And then, obviously, the follow-up question is Lindsay and the kids. Now, you you went from one to three and then to four. Was it like you start with a man-to-man, -man, you go zone with all the little munchkins? Update me on the on the family. <laughs> uh, family's good. Uh, yeah, I got five now. So, what? yeah, we just had a baby girl. Uh, she'll be two, and that that's it. She's that's the last lazy, one. Man. You, we, you sure? Yeah. <laughs> You just needed a starting five, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, sorry if you hear some noise in the background. It's a little chaotic now with the kids. But As it should be. Yeah, my daughter, uh, she's eight. Well, she'll be turning eight uh, this year. And we had the twins. They're they're uh, five. And then I had another son. He's, he's three. And then we had the girl uh, almost two years ago. She'll be two in May. So... You have your yeah, and, and my wife is doing good. She's uh she's taking care of all of them while uh you know out there uh trying to trying to pay the bills and everything. So yeah, uh for anybody who was curious, what are you doing for work now? Uh right now I'm in uh I live in New Britain, Connecticut, but um I work out of Hartford, Connecticut, and I'm a uh I'm a lineman, so I work on the power lines. Obviously, you uh, don't you can't have a, a fear of heights when you're doing that because you've been doing that a while, right? Yeah, um, this would be my uh, sixth year. Um, I've been yeah, and thing about it was I, I was always afraid of heights. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I I, I guess um, you know. You know, basketball teaches you a lot, right? So you know the intangible things that it teaches us that, you know, guys that played the game, um, you know, hard work, dedication, commitment. Yeah. You know, once you start something, it was like always with me, once I started something, I always wanted to finish it. So once I got into this trade, I wanted to finish it regardless. So I have certain things that trigger me to keep going, you know, just like with anything. People have their certain motivations as far as how they keep going, whether it's their kids, their parents, you know, you know, where they want to be, whatever it may be. So I use those triggers to keep me going. And eventually, <clears throat> once you keep doing something over and over again, what happens? It becomes second nature, right? Yes, sir. But you need that motivation to keep you going. So my right. motivation was my kids. So anytime I climb a pole, whether it be 50, 60, 70 feet up in the air, that was my motivation to keep going. Man. So that's, um, <laughs> and my, that's you impressive. Know, my family, man, my wife, my kids, and, you know, just to just to make sure they have a good life, you know. Oh, good for you, man. I'm doing the tip of the cap. Yeah. <laughs> so the first time I ever saw you, Coach James Johnson, when I was the director of basketball operations, had a, a videotape which shows you how how far back I'm going. And he said, hey, man, I, I like this kid. Just give me a look. Because I was a guy who would, like, look at a bunch of game tape. And if there was, like, somebody that was good, because you get so many of them, you got to bring it to the attention of, of the coach. But James was on you. I don't know how he found you, but he was on you. And because recruiting is such an imperfect science, it was like, you know, you were definitely dominating. You could tell you could play, but I, I wasn't so sure about the competition, or we weren't so sure about the competition. And I'm like, man, I I don't know. This, I don't care who you're playing. He's putting up some buckets because you know, you know, you only get eight minutes in in, in high school. Like, what what right? What what was your high school development like uh, from you know freshman to senior year? Um, well, freshman, my freshman year, I just played freshman ball. Um, I felt like I could play varsity, um, but the coaches, you know, they didn't see me uh, as much. So my whole goal after that, after my freshman year, 
was the start for right. city next year. Um, so my father and I, um, he was with me out there in the summer and my mom, you know, outside every day, man, no matter what the temperature was, um, just getting better and better and better. Um, and then eventually when that time came for tryouts, you know, I, I did what I was supposed to do, eventually ended up starting. And then, uh, you know, ever since that point on, I just got better and better to my senior year, uh, averaging, you know, close to 30 points a game and 15 rebounds. Um, but, you know, my, my whole goal was always to get better in every area of the game. Um, but as you know, the best part of my game, it wasn't scoring. My best attribute was rebounding. Yeah, yeah. I, as you know, I mean, you know. let's not sleep on your scoring, but definitely because uh, re rebounding is one of those things that you don't – it's just wanting wanting it, right? raw energy and desire, uh, but it's not pretty, so not everybody wants to do it. Right, right. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of physical. You have to have a motor. Uh, yes. Here's the question. So when you're out there working with Pops – do people drop by thinking you were with one of your classmates? Because that dude still looks like he's in <laughs> college. I mean, what what is he eating that makes him look 15, 20 years long, younger than I am? Uh, I I don't know, man. You know what it is? You know what it is? It's his, his energy, man. He's just got such good positive energy. And yeah. that's that's got to keep him young. So uh, you tell me about the recruiting process of Penn State. Like, how, how did that go down? Because I think – when you came up on your visit, my uh, adopted brother Vince and his brother were up, and they lived in Connecticut. Do you remember that? Yep. I do. That was uh, we came. That was the Michigan game. Um, Good yeah, come I, to. I came up with Danny Morrissey and Mike Walker, and that was my first and only time before I had committed. So I was on an unofficial. I never took an official visit any anywhere. Right. <laughs> um, so the recruitment process was I think Coach Johnson had saw me out in Las Vegas at the Adidas Big Time Tournament Okay, I don't know what game he saw me at um, I, I really don't recall I had a, a very good tournament out there except for one game um, I think it was like one of our first games we, we won I mean we finished 8th out of all those teams out of the 65 teams Right. We end up losing to the Atlanta Celtics with uh, Dwight Howard and uh, Josh Smith. You know, they had a start in five NBA team, Jarvis <laughs> Crittenden, Anthony Morrow, Josh Smith, Dwight Howard, and Randolph Morris. Who went to Kentucky and with the Knicks. So that was their start in five. <laughs> um, and we lost to them. We held our own our first half, but we lost by like 20, 25. Right. It was just too big. Um, but it was, it was one of those games, I'm not sure – and I, I, I'd have to ask him this one one of these days. But um, after that first game, I, I think I had a pretty bad game. And my coach, he really got into me. He cussed me out. And uh, and then after that, he just made me mad. So I just balled out, <laughs> which ended up leading, I guess, the catching the eye of Coach Johnson. And then, um, like I said, we had a high school scrimmage against, uh, I think it was Wilby at that time. They were the number one high school team in the uh, in the state. But the night before, I was in the hospital all night because I got, I got sick. I thought I had, I think I had like kidney stones or something like that. Uh -huh. And I knew it was coming. So I was like, there's no way I can miss this. The doctor was like, you need to go home and rest. You, you shouldn't go to school tomorrow. Right. And I knew it was coming. I was like, nah, I'm not missing this opportunity. I'm going to school. So I, I ended up uh, getting out of the hospital about four, four in the morning, five in the morning, got probably like a quick hour of sleep and went to school. And then we had that scrimmage after the school day. So I ended up having about like 60 points or something like that. <laughs> and then I think that's when he made the call to Coach Chillis and was like, hey, I think I found the, I think I found the kid. Right, right. And and did you have any trepidation about that leap from high school to college? Or were you ready? Um, to be honest, I don't I I knew I could play. I really didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how hard it like 
I was I didn't know whether or not it was going to be hard or easy, you know. Yeah. But I knew I could play. I knew I belong, no question about it. But it's just I just didn't know how it fair, you know. I just didn't know how well I would do. Um, and then after the first game, I think we played Illinois State at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee in uh, 2004. And um, I think I had like, you know, like 15, 16 points or something like that. I had a lot of rebounds, a lot of offensive rebounds, which I thought was very easy. Right. And I was like, man, I didn't expect it to be so easy to like rebound. Right. Um, so, I mean, that, and then that transition before the see actual season, the workouts, it was, I, I can't really describe it because it was so excruciating because, you know, coming <laughs> in from high school and the college, man, you're like, yeah. And depending on def you, a definite game changer. Yeah. Depending on who your high school coach is, it can be a huge leap. To go oh, absolutely I almost quit man you know <laughs> then, uh, coach Johnson cussed me out you know I I thought I was working hard you know and he said man you ain't working hard if I, I don't know this you know and then he called my dad my dad called me cussed me out said you ain't ruining my name and if you're gonna keep working like that you got I'll come my name you up and bring you home. You know, you're not gonna ruin my name like that. I love it. So I, I was like, it. man, these people down here are crazy. I was like, you know, so I was like, fine. You know what? Who I was like, again? I'm gonna work hard. I'll, I'll work hard, but if I die, it's on you. <laughs> and he said, "Well, die then." <laughs> and so every workout, I went full exhaust, and I just, I think that was the changing factor. Uh, right which made me the player that I was during my career in college. Yeah, that's funny. There's something about dads that they're going to hit you right between the eyes. They're not going to copy you like the uh, mom. Nah. <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely not. And, uh, you know, my father, you know, my mother too, you know, you take pride in, right. you know, how we carry ourselves, you know. So, right. so um, they, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to so say it's they, definitely a, a big deal. Yeah, and they came they came with you on that unofficial visit. What was it about the visit that made you say, you know what, this is where I want to be? Um, I, I think the fact that it was my sole uh opportunity as far as playing division one basketball, it was like a God given thing to me. You know what I mean? Every it seemed like that whole visit, everything just felt right, you know. And uh from the coaches the atmosphere, um, the players I've met, um, and actually the, the one specific player who gave me a good talk after that that Michigan game and that night was uh, Endu. Endu Agakazi, great man. Yes, great sir. man. That's my guy, which I'm still in contact with. We, we talk very often. Um, I consider him a, a, a brother and a mentor. Um, but, yeah, that, that, that day – was was uh very special will you make sure you tell him i said hi and i have people ask me about him too so just tell him to give me a shout and we'll, nah, i'd love to talk to him about his career too i will yeah yeah so that yeah that's it's crazy to think like i said recruiting is an imperfect science but the for kudos to coach johnson for you know seeing the talent and I'm sure every team in the Big Ten was like talking. Every head coach was talking to their assistant coach, like, "Whoa, what, what's this? <laughs> why, why, why were we on this guy?" Because I mean, your freshman year, you hit the ground running. It wasn't like you had to uh, develop or anything like that. You were like, "You're all Big Ten freshmen, weren't you?" Yeah, yeah. I mean, you too modest to say that, but I know that. And I had left, so I, you know, that was like. My uh, I did one year with Ed, uh, Jerry, one year with Ed, and then I was out. But mm -hmm. I was around, so I had right. the pleasure of getting to see it all and hang out with mom and dad. And uh, there was just, you know, the way you came on the scene, just I don't think anybody in the Big Ten was ready for you. Uh, so another tip of the cap on that. And Correct. some of the – who are some of the harder guards, the harder people you had to guard, and some of the people that did uh, did a good job on you guarding? If you can remember, um, Alan, uh, I think his name was Alan Greer from Minnesota. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. he had dreads. Kind of, he yep. was he was uh he 
was a wing like me. I think he was about two years older. Um, him for sure, because we were kind of the same. And Alondo Tucker. Um, Alondo Tucker from Wisconsin. He was definitely uh somebody that was that was hard to guard. Um Shannon Brown, Maurice Ager, that Michigan State team that made the the final four of my freshman year. Right. Um that's 2004, 2005, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, as I'm as I'm saying this, you know, they were hard, you know, hard some guy, hard hard guys to to guard. But as as well, you know, I may have done well, but it wasn't it wasn't easy. You, you know? had to work for your bucket. And and the other thing was everybody was concentrating you on you after a certain point because you right. only got a like a few handful of games in before. The scouting report was out, and it's like we got to take this dude seriously. So you would always get the usually the best defender, right? Absolutely, right. absolutely. And I think another big transition for me from high school to college was um, defense, because in high school we strictly played zone. Oh. <laughs> we strictly played two three zone. That's crazy. So, and I was pretty much like power forward center, right? You know what I mean. And you were so, floating, I'm sure, in high school. From what I remember in the film, you were so much more athletic than everybody else. You're kind of just floating, kind of doing your own thing, playing center field. Yeah. So the, so that that was another big adjustment as far as uh, guarding, perimeter, um, faster guards, and, you know, just, just knowing the spots on the floor and, and how to defend, you know, and talking. Talking was a big one, you know. Yes. At, uh, communication. You know, you get cotton mouth, man. You don't even have any saliva in your mouth as much as you talk. <laughs> like, you know, a lot of a lot of high school kids don't know that, man. That's like one of the first things you learn. Yeah. It's funny. Is the you, communication factor. Yeah, because, you, you know, not only is the coach yelling at you, but like the upperclassmen are yelling at you because you're not talking. Uh, right. And that's one of the first things when I go watch a high school game. I just went to see one this week. And that was the first thing I know I, also because I love defense, but. You, they don't, you know, some coaches will know that and preach it, but a lot of times in high school, they're not talking about talking. Um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's like one of the first things you learn yeah. is the communication factor and how loud you have to be because you you're, you're going in the arena with 15, 20,000 people every, every game. Nobody's going to hear you, you know. Right. You can't right. be soft-spoken. And what, well, one of the other advantages you had that, you know, many didn't, but if you played for Penn State, is you you had one coach, Adam Fisher, in the gym with you every practice. Yep. How, how fun has it been to see his ascension to from, you know, being the head manager to now the uh, associate just, head coach? That's mind-blowing to me, as you know. As we yeah. all know, uh, Fish, Fish is uh, – I'll tell you this, Fish was the first guy that hooked me up with a Facebook account. <laughs> yeah. He did my Facebook account. He did my name. Which is and, still uh, and I what? still have it. Perky. Um uh Fish, yeah, he's been a a, a great um, like I said, when when he was a manager of the team, you know, itinerary travel, he was on everything. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he took that type of approach the same way as you know, being a coach. So yeah. uh, he's on top of of everything. Uh, he's one of the best coaches in the country. You yeah, know, assistant man. coaches, and and is due for a head coaching job soon. Yeah, we don't want to lose him. I, uh, for selfish reasons, you know, Penn State needs. I'm uh, so happy when he came back. Um, yeah. And, and uh, you know, he's he is going to get snatched up. So we just got to enjoy him uh, while we got while him. We uh, so shout <laughs> shout out to Coach Fish. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> I got fish, man. But I'm, 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 I'm so happy for him, him and his family. His, his parents are great. Um, and you know, that's that's going back. It's almost twenty years, man. Twenty yeah, years you, since I. Yeah, since you I sound met. like that's so far back. <laughs> you hey, talked to hey, old hands. It's far back to me, you know. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I need another probably what another twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now you're throwing yeah. haymakers. Uh, it's, and you also had, I mean, you had two of the baddest that ever lace them up, along with yourself, with, with Taylor and Jamel. It's, yeah. Talk about having those guys as teammates. Oh, it was, it was, it was great. I didn't, um, as far as Mel, you know, that's that's my other 
other battle buddy. You know, we were in the paint always battling, man. And, you know, we had a competition to see who could get the most rebounds. And, you know, we we fight, you know, for one another. And we we knew the uh, the mutual respect there. Right. You know, as, as far as the offseason, we would go at it as well. Um, and as far as Taylor, you know, he's he's a all, all-time leading scorer. Um, I was very happy to watch him blossom into what he was because I had the younger version of Taylor. I only played with him one year, his freshman right. year. Right. You know, I've I, I seen the potential there as far as him being hungry and, and, and wanting it, you know. And then yeah. after, once I got hurt and everything, pretty much when I got hurt, that's like kind of when he turned the corner because he had to turn into that type of player for the program, you know? Yeah. So it, it was a it was a, a good, a great thing to see and have and for him to have a successful career and him now being a coach and able to pass all that knowledge down. Because now he was Boo's, he's because Boo is balling out right now too. Oh, abs- absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So this it, this is all around a, a a great thing to see that all those guys are doing well, and you know that we're still here, man. You know. Yeah, and you. Uh, so you talked about your you tore your ACL in your senior year. You only had maybe sixteen. You're like halfway through the season. That yeah. had to be rough on you, man. Y- yeah, it it was, and and uh, after fa- facts after the season, it was a. Uh, it was difficult, but, um, you know, God doesn't make any mistakes. I don't regret anything um, that happened. I'm, I was just happy that I was able to do what I was able to do while I was there, you know, and got to connect with a lot of people like yourself and um, my teammates and everything. Because if it didn't happen in that order, I wouldn't be where I am now with my kids and everything. So I'm very grateful for, for what what I did, and I'm very grateful what I have now. And for someone who doesn't live in town like I did, you and the family continued and continue to be so involved and come and support the team. I I know before I moved, I would see you guys a couple games a year at least. Yeah, I I try to make it an obligation to come you know, at least twice to three times a year. I mean, it's a little difficult now because I got kids and everything, but I, I do try to make it a point to come down every year, you know, just, you know, just staying connected um, and adapting to all the changes and uh, with the environment, the people, uh, the culture. Um, so I make, I make that my point because that's, you know, I consider Penn State my second home. That's my home. You know, and I'm going to be there till the day I die. You know, yeah. I'm going to try to be at every year if I can. Right. Um, and, you know, it's, it's something that I work for, too. And I want to show my kids that and the, and the culture that we have and, you know, just show them that Penn State life, you know. And, right. you know, they're already interested in. I'm in drinking State. that Kool-Aid early, man. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, they, they're starting to see a whole bunch of UConn stuff, but I'm just trying to keep them solid ground on Penn State right now. Thank so. you. Please, 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 please do. Yeah. yeah I, well, so we talk about Taylor and Jamel that you play with, but it seems like you have a, a, a good relationship, too, with some guys you didn't play with, with like Lamar and, and Mike Watkins. Are, are those yeah. two guys you keep in contact with? Um, Lamar, yes. I got enough. Uh, Mike Watkins. Um, yeah, I... Uh, you know, I reach out to those guys. I talk to them every couple months, you know, just to follow up, see how they're doing and everything. Um, you know, as I say, they're graduates of Penn State as well. Um, and, you know, those guys were good prime examples of what a Nittany, Nittany Lion should be on and off the court. You know, we all have our different situations. And, you know, sometimes you go through some things, you yeah. know, but it's how you overcome it and it's how yeah. you lead as a person and, you know, how you, how you, uh, you know, just keep going and, and keep persevering. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, it was, it was a pleasure getting to watch them play too, just like yourself. So uh, you, you had the ACL your senior year. Talk about the, the basketball career after Penn State. Well, the basketball uh, career after Penn State, it didn't last too long. Um, you know, I've, I've, I played semi-pro 
and played overseas uh, for for like two years or or whatnot. Um, and then Good experience? what was that? Good experience? It, 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 no, it was a great experience. Like I said, I take I take uh, life, you know, whether it's good or bad, I take it as a blessing because you learn from it, you know. And, um, you know, that part of my life and, and that situation, it, it wasn't for me. Um, I came, you know, within my heart, I gave myself a certain age that if I wasn't at a certain point where I wanted to be, that I was going to go out into the uh, working field, you know, get the experiences of, of working a job because I never worked a job right. before. Right, you right. Know. So you, you were you did uh, you were with Erie Bayhawks, you played in Hungary, Sweden, yep, and then you had a couple calls in Phoenix too, right? Yep, yep. Summer league, yep. Yeah, and, and that uh, just the travel alone should have is like for for me. I always thought that eh, maybe I should have done that just to travel and see other cultures. Yeah. So, um, it, it, it was, like I said, it was a great experience, um, you know, to gain that independency of, uh, really relying on yourself, you know, and really trying to, you know, find yourself. Like I said, you go through things, um, during certain times of your life and really find out who you are, you know, right. and you have to really know your calling pretty much and what's, what your instincts are telling you what uh what you feel and if, my feeling for me god was telling me you know it was always get give something to try and if it just doesn't feel right it's time to look in another direction and you Lindsay's know, and in I, your life by this time too right what's that I'm Lindsay's sorry. in your life by this time too right yes yep yep she is and we just uh we were new you know we started you know dating and going out and uh, she told me, she was like, I want you to go, you know, I don't want to hold you back from anything and, you know, just go try it out. And if Which you couldn't have been easy for her. No, it wasn't. But she had a career of her own. She, you know, she was a right. teacher, um, kindergarten teacher, which she had a career. She'd been oh, doing those for like almost 10 years. So, um, so she pushed me to go and. You know, she said, if it doesn't work out, I'll be right back here waiting for you. So I was like, all right. That's ride or die right there, G. That is. And she's, and, you know, <laughs> she's still here with me, you know, 15 years, 16 years later. So well, make sure you give her a hug for me, too. Uh, so you, uh, I was like, uh, also, like, I know you've been involved, you know, like in co uh, coaches versus cancer, Penn State. Um, and then you also have like a, um, a charity, uh, is it Jeff O'Neill? Charity, yes. Talk, talk yes, that's my, that. Yeah, that's my um brother-in-law, my wife's brother. Um, he uh tragically passed like uh it was now almost six years ago. Um, you know, he was just a great loving guy. Um, I consider him my my brother. He worked. He was a DEA agent. Um, you know, he he worked like the cartels, those cases, and everything. Wow. Um, um, he was undercover and then he became a fireman because he wanted to be closer to home. So he was a DEA agent for 10 years, lived out in Miami, uh, L.A. and New York. Um, and then, you know, he became a firefighter, which he said was his ultimate dream. And then uh, he had gotten into a, a car accident. So it was uh, it was it was tough. But, but uh, we passed his legacy on by holding, you know, his mom and dad holds events for the family just to keep his uh memory alive you know oh that's so, great yeah. that's great so people but, can uh, like if they can if they wanted to donate to his uh to the charity that there's a website i'm guessing uh yeah i can i can uh text that to you i think he, he has some scholarships that his uh mom and dad they actually do for uh new brand high school students here in connecticut so it's, it's, it's no website right now. It's just something that they do on his behalf. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll put that up there. Why not? Uh, right. So have you have you been uh, – I know this is a silly question. Been keeping track of the current team, give me your thoughts on, you know, the current team, Coach Shrewsbury. What what are you seeing? Oh, absolutely. I uh, met Coach Shrewsbury last year when we had the alumni game versus Purdue. Um, uh, a guy I feel like just that, that wants to win and get it done. You know, 
Yeah. Uh, very winning mindset. Uh, the current team now, they're playing well. I, th I, th I think they should even be better than what they are now. Yeah. You know, yeah. they had a couple of hiccups, but um, they have a good chance. Right now, they put themselves in a good position to fun make to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, real fun to watch. Good product. Absolutely. Jalen Pickett. Um, I love Seth. I, I, I like Seth Lundy, too. He's an yeah. all-around player. I know this is last year. Um, those guys, they have a, a great nucleus and a, and a good foundation to get things going in the right direction. Yeah, I mean they 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 shoot the shit out of the ball, which is fun oh, to watch. Funk, oh, when he get hot, yeah. that boy hot. Yeah, I you know I got a a friend of mine, really good friend who uh, played basketball at Bucknell. Actually, was one of my high school uh, mentors, a guy named Steve BC. But uh, Kevin Blackwell played at Bucknell, and when word got out that uh, Funk was coming to Penn State, he was not happy. So right. that made it my job to troll him every time Funk goes off. <laughs> so to troll him. Of course yes. you would, B.A. Yes, of yes, you would. yes. I can't help myself, man. I can't help it because he's so, he's so good. And he hits, I mean, I, I love his J. I love the way he plays. And then you, you, can't, you can't put a price on experience, too. So to get somebody yeah. with that kind of experience, like you could almost put, you, I mean, essentially, it was a plug and play. You know, he didn't right. have to go that far down the road. And, you know, I'm sure for him, you know, Bucknell is a, is a legit school. And I, I've always thought they were, but I'm sure he wanted to test himself against, you know, a big school, a Big Ten school. And right. he, he's he's showing out. I think he's leading the Big Ten in three-pointers made. Or if he's not, he's probably number two. So, but I think he's still number one. Uh, so, yeah, it's been it's been fun watching uh, this year's team. And I, I, I think they're going to uh, they're going to knock really. I'm. I would be surprised if they weren't in the tournament. I don't want to do put any undue stress on them, but yeah, um, you know they seem to be holding court. They're hovering around that five hundred, like everybody in the Big Ten is right now. So it's wide right. open. But right. do you get, oh, I mean, absolutely? And my guy Miles Dread too. Let me not forget him, man. Yeah, um, Miles. Because yeah. I, I got to meet Miles a couple times too before he even came to Penn State. He was up in the summers. Uh, when Lamar and Mike uh, Watkins was in school, so I got to meet him a couple times, talk to him. Yeah. Um, so he uh, he's had a great uh, career too. So I don't and we're lucky to get him back. Uh, yeah, and that's probably uh, one of those things that Coach Shrewsbury and I, I probably even Adam because he he didn't have to play this year and he he chose to come back. Like me personally, right. it'd be hard to get me to play five years in college. So yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, it's tough, man. It's, it's, as much as you love everything, it, it's a grind. So uh, they must have done a really good sell job. I'm just being around them. Uh, you know, I can see why Miles made the decision he did, and I think he's ending his career on a high, very high note. So good for him uh, yep. for making that decision, and good for the program because uh, I'm Absolutely. sure he's he's extolling a, a lot of knowledge uh, out there, right? <laughs> Absolutely, the le the leadership and the experience, and, and like I said, he's been there five years, so he knows what what the culture is about and what needs to be done. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Well, man, yeah. I appreciate the minutes. I know you're busy. You got five rug rugrats running around, but I, yeah. I do this because I get people asking me about guys all the time, and so uh, reached out and they were more than happy to do it. So I appreciate your time, and uh, again, give give wifey a, a big old hug for me. I will appreciate it, B.A., man. And, and, you know, any time for you, man. Somebody <laughs> need to ask you the questions on your own show now. No. Oh, no, <laughs> no. You don't want to talk about my like, career, especially if people have had their dinners or anything like that. Uh, I was, nah, <laughs> man. You you a legend, too. Get out of here with that, man. <laughs> with, with, with the modest, man. Legend, but, uh, legend, yeah, I appreciate legend. you, man. Thank, uh, thank you for having me up here. And uh, it's good seeing you, man, that you're doing well. And hopefully I can see you soon. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm in Florida now, so I don't get up there too much, but I will give you a heads up. Um, I'll try to get up during the season. What we should do is coordinate when you're going to Penn State, and I'll try to go. But it's cold there in the basketball season, man. I'm a diva. You know, if it's yeah. not 60, it's hard to get me to leave Florida. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, you, man. Will you take care. God bless. All right, B.